energy, money, even love, like the emanations of your heart or compassion, like you give away energy and then energy flows back to you. And you have to be in this beautiful give and take balance homeostasis relationship. And that's really the, the part of the real lesson of what we're doing here is learning how to be in this balanced state so that you're sustaining others and others are sustaining you. And it is taking the resources that you need even while you gift resources to others. So it's a really, really different um, approach mm. than just me, 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 me. And I take what I want and I do what I want and I have attitude and I do anything. Cause when you do that clearly like there's cosmic blowback. Hello and welcome. My name is Campbell. Hope you are having a fantastic day. And today we have a special guest. We have Aurora, who has um, a very interesting story and a very interesting concept as well. Uh, so um, I'm not even going to try and get into it. I will let her explain. So <laughs> welcome, Aurora. Thank you for being here. Hello, Campbell. Thank you so much for having me on your show. No worries. It's a pleasure. So um, let's just jump straight into it. Um, maybe able to see on the wall behind you a bit of artwork, which has got to do with your concept, which is called the Flying Rainbow Lasagna. So it's, it's not the, the flying spaghetti monster. God, it's the Flying Rainbow Lasagna. That's right. That's right. And it's so funny. Like when I first invented this, this was 20 years ago, and I'm very much a cultural outsider. I'm a galactic walk-in and I did not really know or comprehend or couldn't anticipate the challenges that would happen by naming this shape flying rainbow lasagna. Like it definitely is kind of an unusual name, but coming from my direction, which is one of great literalism, that that didn't seem odd to me at all. I don't know if people are watching both an audio and a video of this, but if you're audio only, the edge of my sculpture has a curly edge, kind of like the curly edge of a lasagna noodle. And that is where that shape came from. So kind of like if you were to take, like if you didn't know how to say something in French or German and you just picked up the thesaurus and were like, did a very literal translation of what you're seeing. So yeah, this is a shape that flies or levitates. It is rainbow colored and it has a curly edge like a lasagna noodle. And that is why I named it that. So it was not really, um, you know, understanding in terms of human communication or marketing, or even having an extremely long email that, that I have to spell it out for everyone. Flying rainbow lasagna is a pretty long email to have. Um, but all that being said, Sometimes I actually have had a lot of positive uh, feedback on my choice of calling it this because people find it to be rather lighthearted and it's a serious concept that, or like, let's say the concept is profound. It has a lot of depth. It has a lot of math and higher dimensional um, or organizational structure behind what the shape is. So it's not frivolous and it's not whimsical, um, but it's meant to be accessible so that when people come at it, they it looks like something that is um, interesting to them. Many years later, I tried to rename it. I thought maybe I could think of some like very serious scientific sounding name for it. And it just didn't work to try to rename it because just sometimes things are what they are when they are named in the moment of creation. Like the baby comes out and you just say like, it's named whatever, you know, Herbert or, you know, something strange. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's it. That's just our little name for it. So yeah, so this is the Flying Rainbow Lasagna. And this was spontaneously created in 2001 in the moment of me walking into this body in what could be called a near-death experience or a metabolic death experience. And then from this, is like the seed that all of my other artwork and music and teaching and other things come from. So in understanding this, it's pretty much like you understand the epicenter of everything else that radiates outward. And this is a concept that is kind of like a higher dimensional Taurus. Mm. And of course, that's just a static representation. It's, it's what we're talking about is something that's moving constantly. You got it. In fact, I have a video if you ever want to, do, if you want me to do a share screen, I can pull up a video pretty quickly in order to be able to share that with you. Yeah, yeah. If you want to share the screen quickly, that's fine. So this is a video that I helped make with a facilitator who was an animator that had um, much better programs than I have but I didn't make it myself. So I drew like the storyboard and then they um, acted it out for me. 
but you can get an idea of uh, a point that is the singularity that is jumping up and down. And as it jumps up and down, it creates as a waveform, like in its wake, this flying rainbow lasagna structure. Nice. And what got me, um, well, what, what sort of, yeah, um, <laughs> kicked my curiosity was the colors when you were talking about the color spectrum and how um, we have red and that's made up of, is it two orange bars, which is made up and it's, it's sort of, you show how it's fractally, um, sort of all the colors are fractally encoded with each other. You like got it. In fact, different levels almost of, of frequency or something. Beautifully well said. It might be a little challenging to see on the animation because the animation might not be like completely um, literally accurate, but I make it very accurate in all of my paintings and in all of my other um, more di my, my artwork is almost diagrammatical, like diagrams of this, that the red sine wave is always going to be the largest and then orange is always going to be calibrated as one half and yellow always as one third and green always one fourth. And these are correspond to the chakras. So then the turquoise is always going to be one fifth and this indigo is always one sixth. And then the crown chakra violet is always one seventh. So the wavelength that is the size of this violet fits seven times within this larger red. And also those are colored proportions that are harmonic proportions, just like um, notes on the piano. I could turn on my piano, hold on. I'm squishing over to the side so I can turn on my piano and play for you. Um, just like, you know, there are preset notes of the octave on, on a piano. So if you have, that is preset on the piano. And what I have done with my insight is see and perceive this harmonic structure of the cosmos. The, there is an intelligence that is already there. I like to say that it is made by the great composer, you know, like a great uh, grand scale intelligence that has developed this language of harmonics and that I perceive with my inner eye, these different um, vectors and circles and uh, waveforms and the way that they interpenetrate. And so I perceive this as a language as opposed to just really clarifying. I didn't just arbitrarily make it up or develop it as an artist and say like, like this is my thing. Like this is really a thing that is in existence, like a landscape that a cosmic landscape that I see with my inner eye. And then just like, you know, the realistic painters of whatever the 17 and 1800s attempt to paint accurately and portray accurately what I see in this inner cosmic landscape so that I can teach others about it. And also so that people who have been there, a lot of times people see my, my work and, you know, my animations and things like that. And they're like, I have seen that exact thing, usually on some psychedelic adventure, which like I'm not necessarily encouraging people to do, but I'm not judging you for. Um, but yes, that, that they're like, yeah, that looks exactly like what it looked like on DMT or on this or on that. And I'm like, well, that's because those substances literally bring you into a consensual reality, a real place that is this mathematical type of quantum reality. But the good news is that you have endogenous DMT, you have endogenous cannabinoids, you have a naturally occurring, pretty much psychedelic chemistry set inside of your body biosystem. And also you have this amazing energy field around you that is part of creating, not, it's not just a psychedelic experience, it's a perception of higher dimensional reality. So I teach people all about that. I have a whole class that's all about that, like starting with the basic fundamental building blocks of, you know, if you were, if you were learning music, you'd learn like, this is a note. And then this is the next note and the next note and the next note, then you learn a chord those notes sound good together. They sound good together because of harmonics. And then you also learn about what, what each of these colors represents, how these colors interpenetrate in terms of the chakras or energy fields of your body, how each one is nested together and how they all kind of um, sit on top of one another as um, they are interconnected, like the health and stability of one area of the system inter interrelates to the stability of the rest of the system. And this is also all harmonics. And all of this is 
preparatory, like it's like your, your ground-based studies for flight school. Like you're learning how your flying vehicle for flying through the, the higher dimensional states of being, how you're shaped, how it functions, what your anatomy means, what each of these different colors or layers of, 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 um, of experience are all about. And all of this is meant to be empowerment information so that you can know about your own anatomy, know about your own ability to create or influence reality, know how to better navigate and fly through reality. So it's like, it's not just random or arbitrary stuff. It's absolutely highly accurate, profound truth of the cosmos. And I share it with everyone here as much as I can so that you can be like, like literate. Like when you are literate, when you, when you were a child and you gained literacy, you know, usually people learn to read when they're like five or six or whatever, like the world opens up all of a sudden you're like, wow, like I can read street signs. I can read what's on the outside of a can of beans. I know what everyone else knows. So there's a great empowerment to becoming literate in the language of pure frequency or pure harmonics, because it's part of our body. It's part of how we move through time. It's part of how we create or, or um, are experiencing reality. And there are many other organisms that are already literate that you consider them to be like mature consciousnesses in the cosmos or in civilizations. And that this helps each one of us and humanity as a, as a species together to level up and be like, oh yes, like we are literate in the, my spine just went up. We are literate <laughs> in the information of the higher dimensional language of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And that also means that we're ready for like real conversations with some of these more sophisticated levels of intelligence that are out there or in there or up there or around, however we want to say it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, in my work, I talk a lot about, um, you know, the program that's been overlaid um, yeah. and, and spells um and so what you're talking about is th like the language right so seeing things as that because we all know everything is energy you know the 3d is just a, an illusion made up by you know collective consciousness and all this stuff um so basically you're talking about seeing reality really being able to read um what the energy signatures the frequencies and interpret them as as something real rather than everything physical little balls flying around and smashing into each other <laughs> yes it's a totally inverted and truer picture or truer let's say prioritization of information that the third dimensional reality that we're in right here it's not that it's unreal and that is part of the octave it's part of the spectrum it's the red layer but that's only a tiny amount of the information that is there and it's not the most accurate amount so when you talk about either spells or magic or the supernatural or even the miraculous how we define these things it's like what arthur c clark wrote he said that any sophisticated technology that you don't know how it works Works would be defined as magic, quote unquote. So we have all of these layers of being that mostly for the human from this level are, um, you're, you're immune, you're not able to see those layers. And so it, there's something going on behind the scenes that says, I don't know how this is happening, but somehow it's happening. And somehow there's some intelligence guiding and directing this. When your inner eye opens and you become literate, then you become empowered to see what is behind the scenes. You actually see a truer layer of reality than the physical materialistic reality. And then being able to decipher it and become empowered is, um, you know, it's, it's expansive. It, it's, it's becoming a mature citizen. And then also um, like in the Star Wars, um, with great power comes great responsibility. So, and you can tell that I've done all of my like pop culture studying. I, I do this to try to stay relevant because I'm really, I'm not from around here. So, but yes, um, when you can learn more and perceive more, you are greater, you have greater responsibility in the sense of you can't say like, well, I didn't, don't, don't blame me. I didn't know it's that guy's fault over there. But the truth is no, and the more that you see, the more that you must be accountable and responsible. And that's in your own body being and in your interrelationships with other organisms and in your mind influence or, or consciousness influence on the larger whole of reality that you're creating and experiencing along with others. So yeah, it's the, the empowerment of recognizing how much your consciousness is creating reality, affecting reality, affecting other people, and then how much you are also experiencing waves of time and waves of things flying on top of you, gushing over you that influence you as well. So 
a, yeah, basically so you can interpret correctly all this stuff that people deal with, you know, what's going on? Ah, you know, because yeah. clearly a lot of people don't know what's going on and can't figure things out. And that's because, like you said, they're illiterate in the, in the information. That's right. There's a huge amount of integument or embroidery behind the scenes. And then everyone is only looking at the surface level, the, the um, surface interpretation of it, but you have to be able to see behind the scenes. And then once you're able to see behind the scenes, then that is where all these things that we would say are supernatural or miraculous or magical are happening and to influence them or utilize energy in that area, you can become hugely powerful, but you must use the power in a good way so that you're being in alignment with cosmic law so that you're making things better. You can't just be like, I want to randomly do this thing for my own ego purposes, like smash, 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 bull in a china shop, because mm. then you get cosmic blowback. There's always, oh, I didn't know that I would do that and that would happen. And now I'm learning all these lessons. But hopefully you don't learn your lessons all over everyone else. Like the fallout, there's always fallout. So you don't want all of that uh, negative ripples or repercussions through time to influence everybody else. So all of this is about learning in a responsible way. And as information comes to each person incrementally, you level up in terms of your wisdom. And that's the part, it's a soul refinement, growth on an inner spiritual level. And it allows you to become eventually a mature co-creator and co-experiencer in the, the true whatever cosmic love making, you know, like, uh, mm. you know, unconditional love of the cosmos where you're really generating reality with a larger, a larger mm, intel overarching intelligence. So magic, basically, um, this is like manifestation and then how to control the matrix kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I keep on saying, like, it is about um, responsibility and a lot of that responsibility comes from achieving understanding of the unity consciousness that if one is just in separation and individuality, you say, me, 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 I do what is good for me. Or in this tough voice that I do what's good for me. Like, you know, F you, I do what's good for me. Um, but when you're in unity consciousness, which is really the quantum understanding that all light is the same light, that all of these pinpoints of light are all like an unfoldment of the initial source, but are now in um, an expanded version of reality and that are all eventually going to converge back together. But in unity consciousness, you look at others truthfully as um, extensions or fractals or facets of self and facets of self state journey. And in doing so, you don't want to you know, diminish or harm or neglect or abuse other aspects of self. You want to do what's righteous and encourage other people on their journey. And so that means acting in accordance with cosmic law. So it's really, as you begin to open up this eye of inner vision, you begin to see more how like Campbell is a reflection of myself and my own journey, even though there's individual individuality and individuation. Um, I want to do things that will help you on your journey because I actually see in you a reflection of myself. But then there's also strong boundaries because you don't want to just like say to everyone in the world, like everyone in the world is me. So everyone in the world, like <laughs> here's all the money in my bank account, because then you would have nothing. So there's all it or in terms of your energy bank account, you can't just be like, here, I'm going to let that guy over there have all the red blood cells in my in my blood volume. Like you can't do that. Mm. You need your red blood cells to oxygenate your own body. Mm. So in unity consciousness, you develop good balance between self versus other or self versus community. And I do all sorts of teaching about this. So I do on the one hand, a very academic presentation that is about math, physics, quantum, even though none of it is boring and all of it is very accessible to like the quote unquote, the lay person, the person that is just like a cool, interested person. You don't have to have a PhD to take those levels of my classes. And I also do other teaching that is more on the human level, the anthropocentric level, which is kind of new to me because I'm really more of an abstraction flying around in the galaxy. But on the human level, it's about those types of lessons. Like how do you balance out your own desires and your own empowerment and your own ego needs with those of other organisms and other people and the context that you live within. So the red blood cells are a good example. Like you want to be generous, but you can't give away all your red blood cells because your body needs them because that keeps you quote unquote alive. So it's same thing with everything, energy, money, even love, like the emanations of your heart or compassion, like you give away energy and then energy flows back to you. And you have to be in this beautiful give and take balance 
homeostasis relationship. And that's really the, the part of the real lesson of what we're doing here is learning how to be in this balanced state so that you're sustaining others and others are sustaining you. And it is taking the resources that you need even while you gift resources to others. So it's a really, really different um, approach mm. than just me, 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 me. And I take what I want and I do what I want and I have attitude and I do anything. Cause when you do that clearly, like there's cosmic blowback get the cosmic smackdown of like, no, you are not an isolated figure and you actually have to be responsible for your actions. And I'm being like with my finger up, like the cosmic <laughs> teacher that says, no, 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 you have to learn. Yeah, good student. Wow. So it, it sounds like, I mean, it's symbiosis really, isn't it? Everything's an en energy exchange, right? We, and I guess if we're getting what we're, if what's coming in, if we're interpreting that wrong, then clearly we're going to be giving out what's, wrong as well right so, so unless we can interpret and then um, put that through the correct filters i guess and, and see it then we can't be giving out the the correct energy frequency and whatever you want to call it which seems to be a big problem some people seem to you know take all the energy and they just try to keep it for themselves um and another big thing i just want to quickly mention is with the me 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 i'm seeing a lot of you know and i always have there's a lot of people who you know, they, they proclaim, oh, it's all about giving, giving, you know, I'm, I'm just giving to people. But but really, they're just doing it for the accolades. They're doing it so people say, oh, you're awesome. Yeah, let's applaud you. And then they get, they, and you can see it in their face. As soon as they get a bit of feedback that's positive, they go all weird. They're like, oh, uh -huh. and it's like, what are you, do <laughs> what are you doing? Um, and, and that's just hoarding energy. And apart from hoarding it, you, you, you're you processing it as the wrong energy, aren't you? So that can't, that can only lead you down the wrong path. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful point. And I do some teaching about that too, positive ego versus negative inverted or shadow ego. So when you do something that's truly worthy, you should feel proud about it. My, my spine goes up when I say those words. Mm -hmm. So for example, I know a lovely woman and she is um, a mega marathoner. She literally runs these marathons that are a hundred miles, which is almost, I know, inconceivable to me. Like I'm, couldn't even run maybe five miles, you know, all together at once. I'm, I'm not that great of a runner, but yeah, 26 miles is enough of a giant accomplishment, but she on a regular basis does these 30, 40, a hundred mile long marathons. And for her to say like, I ran a hundred miles, like here's my medal. That is positive ego, taking responsibility, claiming the things that she's actually done, which are laudable, you know, um, good things and can inspire other people. Cause I think that she inspires other people toward their athleticism and expands the definition of what we would say is even possible as a human. Yes, That's very, very different than people who are, um, you know, in negative pride where they're, you know, saying like, I did something, I did something that's great. But like you said, only for the purposes of social posturing or that they uh, it, it, like a positive pride builds your face, your face being like your ego structure in the world. So you could imagine as you do something that's truthful and then you proclaim it, you say like, yeah, oh, like how I, I painted a, a, a lot of paintings. I have them I'm not all here. There are a lot of them are in my storage because well, I have so many of them. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. But I can say like, yeah, I painted this painting or I did this work or it took me this long. And then this is this piece of artwork that I made. Mm -hmm. and that is just like my friend who ran a hundred miles. I can say, yep, I actually did that thing. And it's not in any way posturing. In fact, to say that illuminates your face and your face is your ego structure. And it's like giving you the truth and it shows a truth to other people. And all of that is proper and all of that is right. And, you know, on, on the path of how we should be sharing our gifts with the world. I think the things that are not the proper way of being prideful is in competition or comparison with other people. Cause it's not necessary to say like, I ran a hundred miles and you only ran a mere 52 yards. And therefore I am this percentage better than you. Um, definitely not in that sense. And on the artistic journey, even less so, cause I really don't like to compare myself to others and be like, how many paintings have you painted or how much of this do you like, how can you even quantify the artistic journey? Um, so yeah, I'm all about encouraging others on their journey again as recognition of self-state just in a different form that I really want others like if you have a desire to make artwork or music or whatever I don't consider you to be a threat to me I'm making a silly face like oh no I must protect myself or claim, claim myself against you far from it then I think that there's enough room in the world to have many artists many communicators many musicians many people who give counseling sessions or you know help others in that way 
There's no need in the world to try to claim the ownership of all of that stuff and be in competition, even though I joke about the barbarian value system of this time and place that is very much about ego competition. So that's mm. what it is. Negative ego state versus positive ego state. And hopefully here in the soul refinery of the third dimensional existence, interacting with other levels of self state, that's what we're learning to exemplify. So that what really it feels like in, where I come from in my Aurora Collective at the higher dimensions, what it feels like is, first of all, you can read everybody like a book. You know if someone's run 100 miles or if they're just like a BS or, or whatever, blathering or you know saying something that's not truthful. Yeah. Um, but there's also no need for competition because you can see everybody's greatness. It's literally, like I say, written on your face. Everything that you've done, everything that you are and everything that you're not is very evident to others. So there's no need for a false self-aggrandizement. There simply is the greatness of who you are and everybody is great and everybody has achieved some level of greatness. And so then there's just a, a mutual respect and encouragement on that level of the journey. That's a real, uh, that's where I come from. That's what I'm used to. I am really not used to coming here to these levels of ego barbarity. Oh, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Competition and then having to fight to mm. carve out your niche within a very um, competitive world. So yeah, even though I'm, I'm not a part of that world, I navigate it. And so I try to teach or exemplify good things like that to others too. And the anthropomorphic lesson, lessons that I bring to others where I'm like, yeah, this is how you can be your greatness and still be in integrity with who you truly are. Like if you come from an ethereal realm, if you're a star seed, if you come from a finer level of energy, or if you're an elemental or a fairy or one of these types of like you come from a different world where you're used to being able to have a gentler energy that is more like, I don't know if you can hear that, like a high up note, a high note on the piano that um, energy is respected differently at that level. It's not just only the strong shall survive and bull in the China shop, it's different. And um, how do you be respected here in this world of ego competition? So I, I do a lot with that of helping people to kind of understand how they can still be their true ego selves and not, sacri not sacrifice themselves on the altar of commodification and um, competition and all those. Stay true mm -hmm. to yourself as an artist, as a musician, as whatever, whatever. everybody has different types of uh, gifts to bring here. And how do you share your gifts in the world where it can be very difficult sometimes? It's such a funny concept, isn't it, that we we rank art, which is expression. Like literally people say, oh, I'm sorry, but the way that you express yourself is just not as good as the way that this person expresses themselves. I mean, what <laughs> what is that? That's just, when you really think about these things, none, none of it makes sense. It's, it's just the ego. And of course, the ego and competition, that's just, that's separateness. You can't compete yes. against yourself, right? You have to have, you have to be separate. Me against you, rah, rah, rah. Yes. It's, it's anti-rational. Mm. And in art, a lot of what's done is who sold what for how much money or how many paintings did you have in the show or were you in the show at all or are you in the museum at all? Or in our world of social media, you know what everybody faces, the question of how many likes did you get? How much attention did you get? If you wrote a thing, did how many people read it? How, how large was your social reach? How many people shared it? Look at the analytics. All of those things are part of this ego competition. And it all goes down to the idea, like when you were in grade school, they might have said, it's a bell-shaped curve. Like according to statistics, we're gonna have this many A's and then this many C's and then this many F's over here. So you're in competition with your other people in the class to see if you can get the A's or if they're gonna get the A's. Like none of that is the true world of excellence. It's, that's a distortion of the world of statistics. And mm. so, yeah, but people have in, in, um, embodied those early school lessons as truth. And then it takes a lot. It takes, you know, maybe someone from my perspective, like a cultural outsider to come along and be like, we do things differently where I am from and we don't have to do that here. Yes. In a loving way. In a I loving way. <laughs> And I say, we can do things different here because it's more fun and much more free where I'm from. And I really have, I've been here as a walk-in for 20 years trying to get people to understand there's a whole different way to socialize. There's a whole different way to um, share information. There's a whole different way to do the economy than the barbarian value system of what everyone's been doing here. And that if you do this, that everything changes, everything shifts. You have a much better quality of life. And you, again, don't have to 
sacrifice your true self in order to somehow conform and fit in and get patted on the head like good dog good dog like you'll get your bowl of kibble now like you you you, you can find a way to achieve life. yeah yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah and the thing is you know the truth is the biggest you know the people who get the most likes and all that kind of that they, they're not putting out any kind of information they're putting out they're helping the system and then the program and all the crap that's holding us down and so it's Every not time. about the most likes it's about you know it's much more effective to get one person who hears your message than to have ten thousand likes i mean because then you've affected something i mean unless people are doing something with what you're saying it you're just making noise really aren't you I mean, in the bigger picture, you are putting out good vibration and frequency in that. But but if that's what you're chasing, this is the problem with the news, right? If you're chasing likes, then you're going to change your information to suit the people who like your stuff. And, and there goes the truth. So, so the whole competition I, thing is such a scam. I think the news is just highly suspect right now because we don't even have like a level playing field in terms of the most... Um, you know, the best journalism being shared or watched or encouraged the most. So I don't think it's a level playing field on that level. And I question social media also about whether it is really a natural organic, like, oh, I really liked what you said. And so I will share it and it will go viral. Like I question all of that virality, quote unquote, that I think some of it might be augmented or algorithmically controlled. But amidst all of that, because like I say, I'm here and I'm big on um, living my truth and living in integrity. I think that because where I'm from, energy flows to excellence. And what that means is if you do something that's awesome, you will get paid well. If you do something that inspires other people, other people are going to be like, oh, I want to see that thing that I'm suddenly jazzed up and excited about you. And so I have been living that truth and exemplifying that for the several decades that I've been here as Aurora. So yeah, I do my different classes and artwork and things like that. And I put it out there with the idea and like magnetizing the truth to me that people will say like, that is excellent. I I want to see it. I want to watch it. I want to know about it. I want to know what it's all about and that they can sense my energy and my presence behind it. And that, cause there's some authenticity there that they're like that cuts through all the BS. And that's something that I really want as opposed to the more watered down conformity, the things that people have done in order to um, uh, be um, popular and that they have achieved some level of, um, you know, whatever a, a voice or, you know, a stability on their platform. Yes. By being popular, but then that's, you know, that's also like the good dog, but also I'm so much moving now at this point beyond judgment. Cause I also understand and can um, accept people who are at that level on their journey where they might feel a little bit insecure. Like my shoulders are down. Like I'm a little insecure. I hope that I get like a million likes on my thing. So I knew who I am, but I'm much more like my shoulders are back. Like I know who I am as an artist, whether one person listens to to my song or a million but of course i want a million people to listen to my music yeah yeah, yeah you definitely want, that- want to get the message out there but yes. you can't change people you can't make them want your message it makes you feel great when you send out an artistic product for lack of a better word or effort and then have it reflected back what people are like i loved your song this and that so but yes it does really make so much um of a difference when someone is a really quality person and they're like i felt it i loved it you know i'm connecting with you as an artist you know then you whatever um the casual listeners that might just be like oh yes it was on the background you know if they they didn't really see it or connect with it but i'm fine with that too if people just want to keep my stuff on in the background while they're studying or while they're driving i'm fine with that too i want you to know exactly um and you do have a website and we'll leave all the links below um if people want to go and check out what you do and your your courses and teachings because of course you know look where we are right um everyone at the moment is wanting to well they know there's more to life they're working it out and they want to know what that is how to access it you know with this kind of work because there's a lot of people wanting to you know access um, you know, higher realms and their spirit guides. It, does this help with that as far as being able to co- communicate? Yes. And I would say it's really important before you fly in your vehicle of flight, which is your body being, um, to take your flight school lesson so that you know, like, this is an aileron and this is a decelerator and this is what lift is. Like, you have to know about your energetic anatomy. And also, I teach a lot about the energy body and your time body and all of those things in terms of reality creation and a lot of work done on the eye of insight, which again, I associate it with Christ 
Christ consciousness, but that doesn't mean that it's only for people of a particular religious persuasion or particular church here on earth, even though I want, don't want to sound condescending and we love and respect people who are part of that church, but it's a, like an aperture on your body that connects you to a larger level of consciousness. And it's for anyone of any time and of any religious persuasion, including atheism. So you can look through that eye and understand and perceive time and, um, be able to navigate the world better. I also, some of so that's what like the teachings on just the level of the pure math quantum stuff. But then I also do some stuff that's more personalized guidance for people that are clairvoyant or that are having an awakening about their inner eye. And they're starting to see things and need to get the decoder ring to be like, what am I seeing? What am I understanding here? Or beginning to do lucid dreaming. Cause these are on two different levels. There's the purely abstract, like here where I'm waving in front of my abstract painting. And there's the anthropomorphic, anthropo meaning human and morphic meaning shaped, human shaped. That there's teachings on the level of hum humanness that are, it's a lot harder because words tend to get twisted around like one plus one equals two or 10 plus 10 equals 20. That's it, that's the truth. There is no quibbling, there is no, but maybe this, but maybe this, like it just is what it is. That's what it's like on the level of pure energy and pure abstraction, A plus B equals C. This is the communication, that's the way it is. But on the level of ad, um, anthropomorphic humanness, there's a lot more room for, let's say, complaint and argument and questioning and wiggle room. And words tend to make it less clear. I will explain it again in more and more and more words, but the more words, the less clarity there is. So that's on the level of where you might, where I give guidance and I help people to be able to understand more about what, is, what are you perceiving? What are you seeing with your inner eye? How to use your inner eye? How to distinguish um, an accurate seeing from something that is illusion or projection because you know you do project reality from your inner eye that is totally appropriate your imagination is actually a real substantive force but and also our egos tend to color or flavor the different things that we are projecting and creating and seeing and perceiving so that goes for anyone like if there's a hy hypnosis session the hip hypnosis master might be slightly coloring the session by their projections. Or if you have a dream, if you have any set of expectations, yeah. which is appropriate because you're human, you're going to be coloring that. So all of that is acceptable. And again, when this begins to awaken or this eye opens in your mind, it's like getting your library card for the cosmos. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden, you know, everything. It means that you begin to have access to the learning process. So you don't have to start off as an instantaneous master. I know everything, blah, 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 I'm perfect. You have to accept yourself and love yourself with compassion. I'm on the journey of divine perfection. I am learning about myself and others in context. And that this is the library card through which you are given information or lessons of learning that you then integrate. And then there's even, you could consider it a master teacher that is like the great librarian that's up here at the crown that kind of turns your gaze that says, look over here, read this book. Now look over here and read this book. Well, now look at this information over here and understand this and that being receptive to that level of higher self guidance and really divine guidance will make it possible for you to receive the lessons that you need to receive in the order that it makes sense to receive them and then take time to integrate those lessons so that if you read like a book and it's page one, then page 72, then page 300, then back to page three or five, like all of that jumping around can give a really distorted view of what truth is. So in the learning about how your eye works, you or how to navigate reality you learn in a consistent way just like if you're an athlete training or just like if you're learning math like first you do your basic algebra first you do your basic um addition subtraction then you move into algebra then you move into calculus and trigonometry and then you move into math proofs and things that are on an even more abstract level definitely i mean a lot of people think they're physical so we've got to start somewhere right um and and I was, when you were talking i was thinking about dreams you know when we go into the you know, the dream world, um, all the physics are different, right? It's like you said, things don't have to be done in the same way. They can be interpreted different, but we're so, um, you know, programmed that everything is sequential. Don't has to go one, two, three, four. When that's not really the truth, is it? Like when, when you're on different levels, there's, I mean, there's just, I don't know, what do you call them? Like threads coming in everywhere of different information. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say that there's a linear interpretation of reality structure and events here in this level of um, mental perception, and that we're also taught that linear structure. Mostly when we get here as little infants, we don't know how to read a watch and we don't understand like first this, then this, then this. You're just kind of in a cosmic cloud of different sensations and things that are going on. And then mostly as we become, you know, um, verbal and as we begin to interact with human society, we learn about clocks, we learn about time, we learn about what time Sesame Street is on so you can find your favorite TV show. You start to learn about how the, the day is structured and we develop a linear sense of time. But becoming a multidimensional person and multidimensional perception through your inner eye is everything to do with a nonlinear perception perception of time. So even the language that we use is inadequate. And I often talk about concurrent time, like I'm holding up my two hands and then I'm pressing my palms together. These are two concurrent lifespans. And it could be like, here's the here now with one hand and here's what is called ancient Atlantis with another. And when I put them together, I'm actually living both of these realities at the same time. There is no separation in terms of time. There is no separation in terms of space and the things that are happening like on my thumb or on my index finger. Those are the concurrent lessons of both time places. That's the real truth of experienced time. So we don't have necessarily past lives. We have concurrent lives or parallel existences and that we have an inadequate language structure to be able mm -hmm. to talk about these various things that we're experiencing. So we say like, yes, a million years ago, I was this, but now I'm here, now I'm this. And then tomorrow I'm going to be this, but really it's all now. And that's what life is like and perception is like for me, when I'm in my Aurora Collective, where I bounce back and forth between being here and my Aurora Collective, and in my Aurora Collective, we're outside of the bounds of time, space, and consciousness. All time is now. You see everything like every page of a book that is open at the moment and every edit that's ever been made on every page of every book. And it is a very different level of experience, but there are not really words in the English language designed <laughs> to be able to support that level of experience. Our so languages. this is why I make these paintings. We seriously don't have enough words. Not yes. enough descriptive words. It's just so hard yes. to speak in English. Yes. Right, uh, you just can't get the concepts out. Um, wow, that's awesome. So do, just a last question. Do you think that, you know, you were talking about time. Um, so are we pretty much programmed to live in, in you know, just for the red zone, shall we say, um, the lowest spectrum where everything's, more apart not 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 as focused is that what we're sort of taught to yeah to live on the on the outside and they keep us there and stop our natural sort of progression because we believe it's real we believe oh that's the reality i would say for a very long time the definition of what it is to be a human is red layer which is physical chakra which is base chakra which is just pure survival and materialism with orange, which is mammalian. Mammalian emotions are those that other mammals share. It can be attraction and revulsion or anger and hatred or romantic love or the desire to be petted like a mammal. Do you understand? Like caressed and petted, all of that type of physical love with a very thin schmear on top of the yellow level, which is human cognitive consciousness. And these all relate to in your biological evolutionary form of your neurology. In the back of your brain, you have your medulla oblongata, which is your brain stem that's red. It's the reptilian level, it just keeps you alive, it keeps your heart beating. It makes you allowed to procreate and function. It keeps just the species oh, going yep. and on top of there, there's the mammalian cortex, which is where your feelings are centered. And in your body, your, your mammalian feelings down here in your belly, like your guts, your intestines, your intuition right below your navel. And then in the brain, the bumpy, colluded, um, the convoluted surface area, the outside of your brain mm. is where human thought resides. And that's the yellow level. And that's been the de definition of what it is to be human, quote unquote, for many thousands of years or maybe all of recorded human history. But we, when I talk about being a full spectrum human, we are much more than that. If you go all the way up from green and all through these blues and into these violets, what you're talking about are the higher faculties. So a lot of people feel a bifurcation at the level of heart, the lower self being the ego self state and the higher self being the higher self state. And what I encourage everyone to understand is to claim the entirety of the spectrum from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then up to white, all of that is the human octave. And that also means that 
and you're receiving information and insight and guidance from this part of you that is from your heart all the way up to your connection to the divine yeah, that's really yeah. part of you that's yeah. not like some other person that is telling you with angelic guidance or angelic perspective what, what to be and how to do and then you know you have your lower ego state and i'm making like a silly face like oh, i'm like dumb and human and ponderous like no 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 you're all of these things and when you integrate on all of these levels the ladder of consciousness who you are then you become a fully realized being where you have hmm. physical body and yes, you have animal emotions and yes, you have human cognitive thought patterns. But then on top of that, you have a blazing heart of unconditional love, which is like that is transformative. And that is what masters like yoga masters and teachers, master teachers have exemplified that to us. And then all of these other ability to communicate, to see on a higher dimensional level and to be divinely connected, those aspects of higher self that many people call spiritual, it, it's non tangible the non-tangible aspects of who we are that are harder for science to quantify like you can't weigh them how much does your soul weigh on a scale or how much does your consciousness weigh or how many meters long is your consciousness like we don't know so science is like oh, i don't want to touch that with you know a 10 meter long pole so they're just going to kind of let that be maybe the realm of spirituality and seekers and met metaphysics but please know and understand that these are very real aspects of you they're layer, layers of your being that are just harder to perceive and measure with your current measuring yeah. tools. Um, but they're as valid as um, the microbial world. Like until glasses with lenses were invented and microscopes were invented, no one knew about the microbial world and stuff just happened and people just died of bacterial infections. And they didn't know why until these lenses were invented. And then all of a sudden you could see tiny little things, the invisible became visible due to the invention of the microscope. And then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, now we understand bacteria. Now we understand why that guy's leg turned green and <laughs> he died of gangrene. We know it's a bacterial infection. So I'm making light of it, but I don't want you to think that I'm insensitive. But it's very analogous to the idea that there's all of this spiritual or intangible stuff that's happening on the level of pure frequency just because we haven't quote unquote invented the microscope does not mean that that invisible world doesn't exist. Yeah. It actually does exist. The world of thought forms, the world of frequency, the world of dreams, the world of, um, you know, psychic intelligence. So um, there's that whole, uh, there's a whole world that will soon be validated as soon as that measurement create you know um mm. apparatus and perception device is created but until then your own mind brain and your own inner ability is how you feel this it's how medical intuitives can scan a person and just kind of tell like oh like that guy's got toenail fungus like i scanned that guy with my inner eye able to see this or being able to see if someone has uh, entities, entity attachment or um a lot of these other things like it might seem like wow like how can you tell? Is this a fantasy? Is this something that is made up? It's not a fantasy. It's based in very real energy or harmonic frequency truths and perceptions, but we don't yet have the lensed apparatus to be able to see it. But at a certain point, you will be able to see it and they'd be like, oh yeah, like I see the entity attachment right there. Or, uh, you know, you can see the energy, you will see energy, you will see the energy disruption. It will validate disease as a manifestation of energy disruption. And when we're at that level, we'll have a very different way of treating disease that will be based more on tone, like la la la, I'm going to sing the right medicine into you now. And that mm -hmm. also, that goes back to an ancient or concurrent time, like ancient yeah. Atlantis, yep. ancient Egypt, we sang the medicine into people that they needed you didn't take a, a molecule like you're gonna no, have to take no, whatever no, they name a drug you know mm, you're gonna have no. to take 25 milligrams of whatever drug in order to fix you it's like no you will need this tone at you know this many frequency hertz and we're gonna make it on a tuning fork and we're gonna put it into this level of your glandular system and that will heal you so it's just a different way of understanding medicine and what is healing what is rectification in the body mm. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, looking at everything more as energy. I mean, and that's the the Taurus really, isn't it? You know, heart centers, the integration, and we have information coming from the earth and from, uh, which is also positive and negative, which is also the blue um, or the purple to the red, you know, the, the blue and red. Um, 
which is also plasma cold. And I mean, it's all it's 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 all one thing. It's. I have this old sculpture here that's a little bit broken on this side, but this is an old sculpture of what a Taurus looks like. So that for anyone, and so it's kind of this four oh, vortex. Wow. Structure. And look at the shape in there. That's a Maltese cross. Yes, exactly. You got <laughs> it. You got it. So there's a reason why the Maltese cross and some of these other, there's whatever, um, stable shapes of harmonic foundation principles are used for different either social, cultural, or religious symbols. There's a reason why these are basic cosmic truths and we embody them in our own non-physical body presence. And there it's profound to know about them and be affiliated with them. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Um, very into yeah. symbols and all that kind of stuff. I didn't, wow, yeah. that is very interesting. And I made this little sculpture actually like maybe 15 or 18 years ago. That's why it's, it's, it's unfired greenware. That's why it's been in my backpack and other places and knocked around. But this is the precursor to the flying rainbow lasagna shape. If I held this kind of more at this angle or this angle where it's not yeah, broken, yeah, yeah. If I were to hold this like this and then kind of jump it up and down, that turns into this. So this yep. is the precursor. And then this is what happens when you add that extra movement to it. And um, yeah, adding an additional dimension means adding an additional degree of freedom. That means jumping off the surface of time. That means experiencing time in a nonlinear fashion. Um, so you're no longer going breakfast, lunch, dinner. You could do breakfast, dinner, dinner, dinner in 10 million years, dinner 10 million years ago. Oh, you can jump around time in a non-linear fashion wow yeah. that sounds yeah. that sounds cool wow yeah. um how to how to pilot your own merkaba hey that's um, exactly right i do lots of teachings about merkaba mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. what i when you were talking about your course i, I was thinking yes. that's what you should call it like merkaba training school or merkaba pilot school or something <laughs> I often call it flight school or multidimensional perception school. Yes, absolutely. Mm, definitely. Um, and of course, that's, um, I'm, I'm guessing this will help with remote viewing, which is another thing a lot of people are interested in, in at the moment. Yes, I don't do a specific teaching on that, but I will tell you, or wave the yellow caution flags. For anyone who is beginning their own efforts at being a remote viewer, please know that you will pop up on someone else's radar. So... It's kind of like you become a bright spark on the map of consciousness. Yep. And just it's just like if you're going to go out in your car, put on your seatbelt, make sure you have enough gas to get to your destination and back, make sure you know where you're going, make sure someone else knows where you're going. Like These are basic safety aspects of getting in your car. If you're going to do remote viewing, know that you are going to get some attention or notoriety from the overarching different factions of consciousness that can see what's going on. And it's essential to be able to be like, do be doing your shielding, do your grounding, know where you're going, have someone looking after you. And that can be a physical person or a spiritual presence or a, um, a, um, a lineage affiliation with a particular lineage. Like we need to care for and support one another and have one another's backs. Cause otherwise, if you just decide like, I'm going to drive to the worst neighborhood in the <laughs> middle of the night and I'm not going to wear my seatbelt and I'm going to, you know, whatever, like wear a bathing suit. Like none of that is a good idea at all. So you need to be like protected and be sensible about what you do. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, we'll leave all the links below um, for your website and all the, all the course, uh, the training and that for anyone who's interested. Great. And I'll also just tell you, the, sometimes the easiest way to find me and everything that I share is just do a keyword search for flying rainbow and then lasagna, L-A-S-A-G-N-E, because you'll find my website, but you'll also find like my YouTube, you find my music on all these different places. And just if you look for my music under the name Aurora, it just is hard to find because there's lots yeah. of different yeah. singers and bands and symphonies named Aurora. So just do a search for flying rainbow lasagna. You will find me and you will find all things lasagna and you will be nourished <laughs> by the colors and the frequency food that is there. Definitely, and you won't forget that that word uh, in a hurry. So I, I mean, been lasagnified. Well, <laughs> <laughs> lasagnified. <laughs> nice. Um, I've just got. Yeah, I'm just trying to interpret. I think what you've been saying. I mean, I, we, we're definitely going to have to continue this conversation. I think because um, it's. I mean, I mean, this is what we need, right? This is really starting to see the world as it is. You know, um, um, tuning our superpowers, shall we say? You know, becoming. Yeah someone who can read what's going on and then actually start to affect properly because so like we said before if you're getting the wrong information in you you, you can't be 
getting the, the right picture and you can't be putting the right information out. Yeah, I wanted to say something about that. That's part of the fractal self state. Like I care about other people as if they are self. If you have a clear vision and you know, like on the, on the road, if your windshield is clear, you're a safe driver. If your windshield is covered in mud, then you're going to be veering wildly left and right, endangering others. So too is it with the spiritual journey, with being able to see clearly through your own window up here, with mm. having good guidance from your own inner master teacher, that what I do is encourage everyone to be able to get in touch with their own higher self state consciousness. So that, cause I'm also a big thing about freedom about like that's part of the foundation um values system of me and my collective as aurora and as a higher dimensional being it's all about freedom so i would never want to say to someone else like first like either like bully you like i twist your arm like either like do this or else it's not like that um but also it would be inappropriate if i was like you just let me take the wheel and i will just do all the driving <laughs> for you that also would be inappropriate put you in an infantile state so what i want is everyone to be good drivers up to speed they know all the rules of the road and have a nice clear windshield so that you're not endangering others and so also your quality of your own journey is much better through life because we really are very much influencing one another in terms of the yeah. decisions you make what you send out emotionally and mentally and where you go with your body and behaviorally and in, in every way we are really influencing and interacting with one another a lot we, we are yeah and that's of course what they don't want us to know they want us to know we're all separate and then we then we don't understand anything. It's just all random chaos. What can you do? Yeah, so, that's Tower of Babel, like from the myth the of the Bible, Babel. that exactly. everybody was like, your guys are getting along too well, so let me smash you down and make sure that you can't understand each other. So yes. Yeah, and that's a good interpretation, language. right? Confounded the language. What you know, We always yeah. think it, they're talking about a verbal language, but, but were they? I think they tried to confound every level of human interaction. And mm. I really feel that what we're doing right now is moving beyond those genetic modifications and perturbations, becoming a telepathic society again. And that means we'll be able to have mind to mind communication. And also I say tell empathic empathy to be able to be telepathic mind to mind with, with it, my mind and cognitive abilities also empathy my feelings that it's one thing to talk about something and hear a message from another person it's something else to feel it if i feel your distress or if i feel your um you know your um your pain of your uh anything emotional or physical pain i am much more motivated to stop that to make it feel better to make you feel better improve your quality of life through mm. empathy telepathy through tell empathy so that's what it is to be from this higher dimensional level and then it just becomes a natural like well yes of course like of course i would want my friends and neighbors all to have enough food to eat financial security to live in good safe places not to be struggling with terrible diseases because if they are you feel that coming in through the walls like that guy lives over there across the wall but i feel all of his pain and rage and hatred that's coming over here and then yeah you care about others that are in other places too and then you also care about others that are in other times and also please know that the struggles for unity consciousness and unconditional love that are here on earth or in this realm however you envision this world <laughs> yeah, yeah. are um they radiate outward and are in parallel to other time places like other civilizations and other levels of the galaxy or other levels of dimension that are kind of like concurrent lives i'm putting my hands together like this that you live here now with a lot of other people who are in the process of awakening who are struggling against these inner perturbations and inherent limitations those same limitations were placed on other time places and other people where they had their telepathy diminished or they had their civilization brought down to a different level the tower of babel and all these other things that are you know like these are allegories i should stay and say instead of just a myth they're imagination allegories that are speaking to us on a different level that yeah there are many lost levels of civilization and we've all been a part of it so you're there in those places trying to climb your way back up the ladder of consciousness, even as you're here. And the real lesson for that is that all of these struggles are parallel or concurrent and that a success or a triumph in one level radiates outward and telescopes backward as a success or a triumph across all these levels. So you're not just some stupid guy driving your car and drinking coffee. When you awaken here, you have your life has a powerful impact. You have a profound impact on all these other time places. So 
yes, mm-hmm. do your inner awakening work. It really matters. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's all, you know, whatever fractal compression, you know, the micro, the macro, it's all, it's all the same. That's been my biggest problem, I think, down here is I see everything is all the same and people just can't get that concept. It's very, it's very, you know, the, the separateness is very uh, ingrained, shall we say. But yes, that's yeah. just how I see it. I, everywhere I look, I'm just like, yeah, it's just the same. It's just a different yeah. frequency or a different expression, but it's the same thing. It can be overwhelming to some people to begin to see these concurrent levels of reality it can be too much. Like, so there is a, per, um, uh, a partitioning in consciousness that says like, this is just this thing over here. And then this is just this separate thing over here, but it takes a lot of RAM or random access memory, a lot of processing power in your quote unquote organic computer to be able to see this is connected to this. And these are all fractal miniature microcosms and that they're all interconnected and they're all working together. So Mm -hmm. you're, you're processing things on a higher level with more processing power than what many people have access to yeah. being compassion for them because they might be running like, you know, a old, uh, I don't know, like the same old type of computer, like an Apple. <laughs> computer or something Commodore like 64. That. <laughs> yes. Commodore 64. That's for the old school people. And it had like cassettes. Do you remember? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. cassettes? Like audio tapes that went in there for their program or like punch card type of computer. Mm. So yeah, if they can't keep up with the level of information, then they tend to just look at bifurcated levels of reality. Mm. But and humanity is leveling up on profound level. And I've noticed it even over the 20 years that I've been here as Aurora, humanity's ability to process, to perceive and process information is getting faster and faster. And also time is getting faster. So when you wake up in the morning and then you get to lunch, it could be a million years have passed. Like literally it feels like, wow, like since I woke up, a million years have gone by. So I tend to do these practices now where like I write everything down and I do it immediately because if I'm like, oh yes, in the morning, I'm going to whatever get almond flour at the store by the time 6 p.m i'm actually at the store i'm like oh that was a million years ago like i can't possibly be expected to remember what i was thinking about this morning or or anything or you know Mm. say giving a note to someone else or even speaking your heart to someone else like say it while it's relevant because time is moving fast and either it's separate from the clock it's a it's a condensing of our subjective experience of time within one hour we are experiencing millions of years yeah, we're getting more information in a, in a certain amount of whatever yes. you want to call it, time. Yes, 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 yes. You got it. Absolutely. Good. Very good description. Decipher Which is also one. raising up the um, the chakras, you know, the colour, right? Because there's twice as much information encoded in orange as there is to red, and then it goes up like that, right? So you're getting a lot more focused uh, information out. You got wow. it. And it all I'm, makes sense to me. I, go, I hear exactly what you're saying. Because <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing telepathy with you right now. I hope oh, it's okay. <laughs> I always ask for consent. I'm like, oh, it's, I hope it's okay that I'm reaching into your mind. Because um, you also read my mind and what I was going to say, the human octave of what we define as human is leveling up. So where my fingers are right now encompassing red, Roy G. Biv, red through violet but we're leveling up. So at a certain point, we'll actually be starting with green and we'll be going up into like super violet, super green, super blue. And you might've seen that sometimes in a rainbow where there's like the regular arc of the rainbow. And then within that, there's an even smaller rainbow that might be fainter, but it goes like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then like green, blue, indigo, violet, but it's fainter. And like, not everybody can see it, but usually like people with good eyesight or little children. My friend, this is all like 15 years ago when I lived in Woodstock, but her, her little girl was a child at the time. And there was an amazing rainbow that was blasting over our sky at that day. And she was like, yeah, my little girl saw that. And she said that there were other colors even higher than violet. And I was like, yes, I confirm. And more and more people are starting to see that. So it's called a supernumerary rainbow. And that's what we're doing as we are changing and redefining the human octave from merely like you are what, what people in this time and place are calling it 3D, which is not third dimension like uh, when you live in a cube you're a third dimensional person so all of these languages get very confusing but the Mm. third density to say that you are merely a materialistic object in existence would be a third density interpretation of who you are but we are moving upward beyond that so you really understand yourself as an energy presence as a thought envelope as an emotional 
dance experience dancing through time. And there are huge levels of creative freedom that come from this, but also the malleability gives us a lot of responsibility because the material world is like, that's a thing. It is what it is. It stays there. Like it's that's Newtonian physics. Like the wall is the wall. The thing is the thing. Don't, don't think that you're making anything happen with your mind. Like it's not happening. Um, but when we get into these other levels of pure energy, your mind is affecting the wall, your mind is affecting the thing, and there's freedom and there's responsibility there. So a lot of people are recognizing that reality is malleable. And I think this is where we're getting the phenomenon of Mandela effect and other things like that, that people are like, wait a minute, I know that that used to be a wine shop. And now all of a sudden, it's a florist. And it's like, no, it was always a florist, but it's like your mind changes things or um, remembers things differently, your mind, you change your mind, you alter your perspective, you change reality that's the level of reality that we're in. So all of that being said, I encourage everyone to like, think good thoughts, you know, imagine positive things, um, you know, don't imagine, you know, with the malleability of, of reality, your, your greatest fears being manifested, which is some people are afraid of. They're afraid of like a firestorm or a tidal wave or a terrible disease or any of those things, but try to instead imagine your greatest um, hopes, your greatest fulfillments, greatest miracles happening instead. Yeah, yeah. And, and understand that's their greatest weapon, right, is making us think what they want us to think because then yeah. we create the world they want created because... Totally got it. Yeah, that's it. So... um you are playing the song. Throw it out the yes. window. <laughs> yes, you are there. You're playing the song. It's a song of reality. Yes. So, mm. yeah, it's like, like being in a lucid dream. Like you can emit all sorts of things and make it a nightmare. Or in a lucid dream, you can be like, wait a minute. I know that I'm dreaming. I'm in my pajamas. I'm in a restaurant. I can do anything. And then, you know, whatever, your superpowers ignite. Um, so, yeah, try to be in a lu positive lucid dream, not a zombie apocalypse boogeyman lucid dream. Definitely, definitely. Wow, I think I'm going to have to come and check out your course and <laughs> see what's going on there. I would love for you to enroll. So I only just started the 20, uh, 2022 semester. I started practicing the year because it's so early. Like we only started a couple of weeks ago and I ran my class from like 2013 to 2019. And then I stopped during the pandemic. And this is the first semester that I have done post pandemic. Yeah. And I always add things like there's the recorded stuff that is, um, it's an outfit that's always in style and it's always relevant. It's the recorded information that is just basic cosmic truths. But then I do weekly live lectures and they're also archived in case you have a time zone or a life responsibility clash or whatever. So I always archive them and send out the archives to everyone. And in the lectures, I refer to the recorded lessons, but I don't say everything. And I also speak a lot more in the context of the current experience of what we're going through. And the current experience has everything to do with transhumanism, the pandemic, and like Campbell, you were referencing this sense of an agenda that is on the one hand, acknowledging human empowerment in terms of reality creation, but on the other hand, diminishing your self-selection in terms of what, what quality of artistry do you send out there? Yeah. And yeah, not creating a fear-based reality. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely something we all need to get over. Um... We're definitely learning that lesson at the moment, aren't we? That they're, they're, they're putting on it on us, you know? So yes. I like, learn this lesson or it just gets worse. So We are the dreamers of the dream. That's the big real lesson here, that it is not someone else or some nameless, faceless government that is making these things happen. So I'm very big. We begin to claim the responsibility and the accountability. And then also that begins to become fun and expansive when you're like, wait a minute, not only am I, you know, creating a beautiful world instead of a zombie apocalypse, but I can make it rainbow colored. I can make it, you know, like according to my own, um, but also we're working together. So it's a collaborative, like I can't just, mm. you know, dictate all of the things that I want it to look like. So it's a fun collaboration with other people, but definitely more fun to take responsibility than to just be um, some, a lot of people believe in fate or determinism, the sense that someone else yeah. or something else, maybe like um, a, a bearded sky god or something like that, a man in the sky has already written this all in a book and then you are just walking through your paces and you know going through with, with little power. But I am very big on the concept of free will 
And yep. that's really a basic truism on the level of cosmic law that you're here embodied as an exemplar of free will. And that as you go through your life, this is about more than just saying, well, like my higher self or a bearded God made these things happen for me. And I'm just a stupid guy that has this bad stuff happen to me that it's very much about saying like, I create reality. I create circumstances in reality. I choose this as my response in reality. It's everything to get out of fate, fatalism, determinism, and to get out of victimhood too, because it's no longer like someone else is making all this stuff happen to you. It's like, well, actually I am making all of this stuff happen. And if <laughs> I'm making this stuff happen. I want to make good stuff happen. And mm. I want to make good stuff happen for other people too. That's, that's very big. Yeah. There's that, that sentence that, that no one likes to hear, right? Everything is your fault. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> and it is, but I mean, you know the thing is if you if you can interpret things properly and put out the right energy then you'll be creating stuff that you will want to be your fault you'll be like yep that's my fault i did that my fault. that beautiful thing is my fault i also like to say it's all a self-portrait which is yeah. like yeah all yeah. of these things all of these other Pouring people your insides out, yeah yeah, they're reflections of yourself. Their struggles are reflections of your struggles. So often when I meet people and they're having struggles, I see them as like, okay, that's a part of myself that is struggling in that way. And then how would I want myself to get out of that? But also triumphs. If a part of me is able to run a hundred miles, a mega marathon, I'm like, hooray, like part of me is super fit and athletic and is living its best life. So that is how I like yeah. to, yeah, like it's it's a beautiful viewpoint of reality. Mm, yeah, and it's... it's it's not much of a difference to where we are. It's just a little change in perception and and everything, you know. What is it? When you change the way you see the world, the world you see will change. Oh, I like that. That's new. I haven't heard that before. That's, but that's uh, Dr. Wayne. I'm sure he used to be called Dwyer, but I think now he's Dave Dyer. Oh, you must be from a different well. timeline than me. <laughs> yeah. I'm from the Bernstein timeline. Bernstein uh, bears, yeah, all right? Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's where I'm from. No Good, stuff I'm around so happy me. We have the same home world. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. like, Berenstain? No, never. It was never Berenstain. What, what are you talking about? Stain? Yeah, they're mad. Yeah. I know, right? I'm from the Play It Again, Sam, as well. I remember play it again, Sam, yeah. and I also remember Luke. I am your father. Yeah, yeah. So I know that's all. Yeah, we're converging in from somewhere. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting times. Um, all righty. Well, thank you so much for that chat. Um, like I said, it's there's so much information. We'll have to definitely, you know, touch touch back on this. I've got so many questions, but um, I'll definitely go go and um, like I said, we'll leave the links below for um, Aurora's sites and so you can find out what she does and what she teaches and be a part of it and i think i'll go and check it out and maybe that's something we can sort of check back on in the future as well please oh. do i would love to have you in the class oh thank you and um yeah thanks for your time and um i'm sorry but the names escaped me who 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 introduced us oh melissa Tlalek. Melissa. we have to give big beautiful shout yeah. out so to big, her she to melissa. Oh, lovely she is a participant in my class and also a person who has become a friend and a lovely proponent of all things flying rainbow lasagna. Like she's learned about it, embodied it, and then tries to um, get other people on board, t t telling them like there's good stuff to learn about this. So yeah, she reached out to, to, to Campbell yeah. and said, check out flying rainbow lasagna. And then she emailed me and she said, you need to talk to Campbell about this. So I'm so happy for people to be, it's like the mycelium exactly. in forests that yeah, yeah, bring together new from divergent areas of the forest and feed all the plants so so important to have people doing that it is it is so big thank you and, that, and that's you know a big part of it we just happen to be faces on a, on a screen you know we're, we're, we're definitely not the be all and end all it's all you know it's like we've been talking about there's a big language going on in the background that's connecting everything up and and um you know making it all happen and we just happen to be the the speakers, the mouthpieces. <laughs> the human mycelium. That's really what telepathy is. There's this whole hidden integument, but it's not so hidden anymore. And it's a network of consciousness that all these people are coming together. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And I love it when one person thinks the thought over here and then it gets transmitted through the mycelial network and affects someone over here. And that's yep. just take, take heart, everyone. We are coming together more and more mm -hmm. on these um, on these levels of yeah. unseen reality. Definitely seeing that a lot more. I've always seen that, but it's definitely getting a lot, a lot more intense now. 
everyone's yes. just going, oh, what about this? And then everyone's saying it at the same time. It's like, oh, how does that happen? Yes. Or you dream something and then someone posts about that on social media and it comes up the next day. And it, so all of this is like we're saying magical or supernatural or miraculous, mm-hmm. really positive. And then as we become um, uh, uh, um, intentional interactors, then it becomes even more amazing. Like, yes, I thought about this person and they were in my dream. So actually I have to, I have to get on the phone after we're done with this and call someone that was in my dream last night, say, hey, you, I was dreaming about you, but not yeah. you know, like in, in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, if you see messages, this is how the universe talks. So take it, yeah. you know, pay attention. If you see the same person in a video three times, contact them if you you know if, if these things are popping up and if you don't know what to say just say oh you've come into my reality do you have a message for you yeah, whatever just connect up because this is what it all is very good i applaud that that's a good approach mm. so there we go a few hints um all right i might uh i think we'll stop it there i've just got so much going through my brain no doubt like everyone else you need to digest yeah exactly <laughs> Giant mental meal. Now I need to digest. Very sensible. Good. Yeah, exactly. So if, if it's a lot to take in, guys, don't focus on it. Just forget about it for a few hours and you, then you'll start to understand what's going on. Um, all righty. Uh, so thank you, Aurora. We'll definitely um, have you back on and we'll put all your links below. Um, so definitely go and check out her, her sites and her teachings. And yeah, thanks for spending some time with, with us, guys. And um, I'll be back and Aurora will be back in the future at some point to continue the conversation. And until then, uh, remember, guys, there is greatness inside you. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. I was just up and down, like I'd be up half half awake and then I'd just crash out and fall asleep. And then I'd be up like, where the hell am I? I was just so weird. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Timelines are converging. Sleeping is like a way of in- integrating the things that are going on on a higher dimensional level. Yes.